Over the last 8 months, we've been completely remaking Toy Story 2 from scratch in Unreal Engine 5. We got a lot done this past month, including replacing the entire house's model and finishing the attic. So let's go. First, I need to get Kyle, our lead artist, access to the project files to streamline the art workload. So I decided to follow this tutorial by decryption to set up a server that would host the Perforce server that the game is stored on. If you're interested in the programming side of game development, y'all should check out Decryption's channel by the way. Oh, one other thing I did for our artists was that I used Unreal Engine's modeling tool, merged the faces of the old assets into full objects, and uploaded those to the corresponding Trello task cards. These assets had the correct scale and pivot location, which made replacing the assets easier for me to place in the level, while also making it easier for the artist to use as a template for the new model. Once Kyle had the project, the first thing he did is finish Andy's room by making a new zipline mesh and a Mr. Mike climbable rope. The new zipline mesh has a rubber orange bullet that is stuck to the wall on both ends, and a rope as the zipline part. Mr. Mike may be the most detailed model we've made so far. He was a ton of work to get done. The microphone cable is used as a spline, which the mesh follows and can be used as a combo rope. If you're curious what splines are, they are basically these invisible points that can be placed in a line goes from point to point smoothly. What is cool about this is that you can attach a mesh to these splines and Unreal can make the mesh work with that shape. This is how roads and games are done a lot, for example. Splines actually have so many applications in game development for things like AI pathing as well. I may use a spline for my racing system too when I work on that next month. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on so you can see that get made. Kyle also made the new grind rails, which are basically Hot Wheels tracks. But there's a major issue with getting these new spline mesh based models to be used. On the prototype and first pass of these features, they were designed to go in a straight path. Now, don't get me wrong, I always knew that they would have to be updated so that Buzz can take these on curved paths, but that was always a Future Zack problem. But I'm now Future Zack, so I had to finally do this. First, I removed the cable component and cable generation system that I'd originally made. I then created a system that generates the spline mesh as I add and move the points. I then changed how the zipline and grind system know where Buzz should be by using the positions along the spline. And there we go, it works great. I will also note that my old system had a quick fix where all the grind rails and ziplines took three seconds. And now the system moves Buzz at the same speed for all zip lines and all grind rails, though grind rails are set at a higher speed than the zip lines. This basically just involved me removing the timeline node in the code, so instead I set it up so that Buzz is moved a certain distance every frame, rather than the percentage. This means that short and long zip lines no longer take the same amount of time. Okay, are you ready to be blown away? I got a ton of comments on my last video that the lighting and shadows were too dark. Well, this is for all of y'all. I implemented this dynamic sky, cloud, and weather system into my game. And this is a crazy system that will get more attention if more levels are completed. But we can start out by showing how incredible this looks now. And wow, this looks so much better. Kyle's next task was to remake the entire house shell. This includes every room where we remade the walls, floors, ceilings, stairs, ceiling lights, doors, windows, and so on. And this living room is gorgeous. The garage also saw a big facelift with this counterweight style garage door. And here's the basement, which looks great. And this wooden lattice is lovely. We decided to go with the wood because the mesh is less complicated than a metal wire frame. And it will also pop more in this room. There's also the kitchen. Now this color is a little dark looking. So once we get more completed assets in this room, we may update the color of this wall if needed. We have also completely finished the attic, but let's talk about some other programming features I did this past month first. I do want to quickly say that if you like this content, consider supporting us on Patreon. There's some cool perks over there, such as watching these devlogs early and getting updates to the project exclusively. In fact, they've already known how the attic looks for the last several days. Anyway, support's over there and thank you so much. Now, Dora's giving me some UI art for the HUD. And we are still refining exactly how we want everything to look, but this is a start. However, I had to code these UI elements. Honestly, the health isn't that interesting. However, I do want to talk about the charge UI. I use a single UI element for this, so it needs to adapt depending on the task being completed. I created an event and a function for keeping track of the charge type and percentage remaining of the charge UI, as well as if it should be active or not. For this, I use an enum I created that lets me check if I am using a base laser, a laser upgrade, or a spin attack. This is so I can update the color of the UI properly. Then we can call these events from the player character, and we will look at the laser upgrade as our example. I have an event for when the fire laser upgrade button is pressed, but that will usually be the same button as the normal fire. So after we confirm that we had the laser upgrade, we then call the toggle charge UI event on the HUD UI. 
We set the charge type enumerator to laser upgrade, said it should be active, and then we get the percentage by dividing the current ammo by the max ammo. Oh, by the way, I also set up this placeholder UI for the main menu and pause menu, but no one really cares, so bye. Now, the only issue is that I have only created the base laser attack so far. So it is time to fix that. I created an event on the laser bullet blueprint called setup laser that takes in variables for the damage caused by the bullet, the material the laser should have, and the color of the light attached to the bullet. Then on the character's code when I fire the bullet, I use a switch statement on the type of laser attack to determine what is being fired and set up the laser depending on what is spawned. This wasn't too bad at all, honestly. Also, I decided that I finally needed to add in an animation that Ilya made a while ago for Buzz, shooting and aiming. I'd been putting this off because I didn't understand how to make animations work together when you're only wanted them to affect certain bones. Well, it turns out it's actually really easy. Animation blueprints have a graph that makes this easy to set up. So let me show you the gist of all this. Basically, we have this default graph that has all of our base animation logic in it that we can save to a cached pose. Then we can blend this detail pose with the fire laser pose based on a specific bone. Then we have a simple check to see if the arm should still be up or not that based on a Boolean variable will use either the blended pose or the default pose. The layers blend per pose node has three poses that we blend. This is because we want to use the spine and up for the shoot animation, but we want to use the backpack bone with the cached pose as well since we want his wings to pop out if he jumps for example. We also do something like this with the lock on mode before outputting the animation to the skeleton. I did have to create animation state machines for shooting and lock on, but this is really simple. I do want to learn how to properly organize animations because that was a major roadblock with Fable. I mean, look at this. But this will all be organized as I understand more and more about animating in Unreal Engine. I just need to fully learn how to do it first. I did also do a bit of code cleanup over this past month though. Y'all wanna see some messy code? Okay, if we are not ground pounding and we are not launched and we are not zip lining, uh, if we're not swinging, and if this is, if we're not climbing a pole, then we can, Use our lock on. Cool. Yeah, so when I first set up the movement system, I started out by creating variables to see what the player was doing at that moment. Then I did a boolean check to see if I was able to do that action that was pressed. So for example, if I wanted to use the lock on, I had to do a boolean check to make sure that I wasn't currently ground pounding, climbing a rope, swinging, zip lining, mantling, pushing a box, and that I wasn't being launched. So instead, I created another enumerator with all the different movement actions that I would consider to put the player in a different state. You can see the states here. So now if I want to check if we are allowed to use the lock on, I can just use the switch node on our enum to see which state the player is in, then push those to the valid output on the function, which means we are allowed to lock on. This is much easier to manage and update in the future as well. Speaking of animations, I also implemented the damage knockback animation when receiving damage as well as set up invincibility frames. Nothing to note really here, honestly. This is just pretty basic version of the feature currently, and all this will be updated when I finally do some AI in combat. Something else I updated was how the climbable ropes work, as well as made the shovel fall when you first climb on it. But uh, but the ropes don't really work um, exactly as intended, so that will be fixed soon. Oh, hey RC, can't wait to make your little racing system next month. Anyways, let's show off the new attic. All right, and here we are in the new attic. So you can see we've replaced every bit of the shell as mentioned earlier in the video. And then we've also replaced all the cardboard boxes. Now, you would think this isn't too crazy, but we actually went and we added a lot more detail to these with like more written text of what should go in that room. We added some more decals for like, this is our kitchen items and stuff. We have this really cute one where Andy's room is written, but it looks like Andy was originally written by Andy's mom and then marked it out so that Andy could write his own name. Uh, we have like, you know, fork and knife there. That's really adorable. We have a bunch of like things like Molly's clothes, fragile. Look, we have a little decal of the robot boss that's supposed to be in this area that will be here eventually once we actually add more to uh, the game. We have like a shirt decal. Um, so yeah, this is, this is like a lot, a, a lot more detailed. And so it, it's a lot of fun. We do have some old decals such as like the arrows and like the the glass it's, that's breakable that was in the original game as well but yeah this looks this part alone even looks awesome uh but then we got all this over here so let's go investigate this so we did change the level layout 
a little bit. So first you climb up this extension core that's plugged up to the lights to get up here. There's no longer a post sticking out of the wall. And then we can push this to where it goes. And then we can get on this, this seesaw. So this right here will tilt as we go to each side. And so uh, it will make you have to kind of hurry up and get across. So we can take this, we can jump up this conical rope. As I mentioned just a moment ago in the video, the conical ropes don't work exactly as they're intended to. Uh, and so it, it's a little funny looking. Now we do have the swing bar. We changed this out to be like an actual light. Uh, and I really like how that turned out. I think it looks like really cool. And there we go. Wow. Yeah, see it looks great and plays great. So let me explain what's going on up here. So we have these lights. They're not plugged in right now. So these are actually going to be turned off. And then we're going to have a, an outlet over there on the right side of where the lights are where this would be plugged in and there are going to be lights plugged in that go all the way around the room. I think that'll make the room like much nicer looking, but then we'll have these lights over here that are turned off. It's just an emissive that we can update pretty easily, honestly. So we have up here, we also did add new 3D nails. In the original game, they were just 2D pick, they were just 2D images, 2D sprites that would rotate towards you. Uh, but we actually made them like fully 3D now. I also placed them in the basement on the palette that's down there. And we have three different versions of these nails. So we have them at different bend points and one that's straight. I love these metal plates that hold these pieces of wood together. Um, absolutely love it. You also see, we also get a little bit of sunshine in this room, but not a lot because we just have the one window, but it's over there on the side and also right here. But yeah, let me know what you think. I think this looks so much nicer. This is such a pretty, uh, room and I, I can't wait to get more of the house done now. On a last note, I fixed that crazy bug at the end of my last video where I would just teleport to the swing bars. I really only bring this up because that was actually a bug uh, with Unreal Engine, but essentially what happened was that the basic shape had its collision scale multiplied for some reason, and that means that I kept going in and out of the mesh's collision. Also, I started the new shield feature, uh, but it still has a lot of work to do, but this is pretty cool. Anyway, support us on Patreon if you can. Join the Toy Story 2 speedrun Discord, link below, and y'all take care now.